Wednesday, July 26th. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, good morning. It's smack in the middle of the trading day, 9.43, California time. And we have the market slipping a little. And the S&P 500 in particular got right back up to the same little resistance area it started to develop here about a week ago. Look at this high today, 455 and small change was the high almost exactly the same two days ago. The opening and the close a couple days before that, the high on another day and almost the high on another day. So we've only had one closing price above today's high and that was yesterday. But now it's looking a little bit like a double top. We have an overbought condition yesterday, so no surprise it's slipping. But we need to start getting below and staying and closing below 452.20. Once that happens, then we're probably on our way down to um, that 444, 443 ballpark I've been talking about uh, for a little while since we gapped up. All right. So there's a gap to close where we're bought and we're in an area of historical resistance at the rally highs. I forgot to mention that. Very important, actually. So the last couple of days poked its nose up into that blue zone, which contains highs going all the way back to September of 21 before the end of the bull market after COVID. And the beginning of the bear market, which was uh, January 4th or 5th, 4th, I believe, of last year. So uh, this resistance area is very important. And it does seem to be stopping the rally. Next, we should see some bearish activity of some sort, uh, or their expected bearish activity in other indexes like the DIA has been unbelievably strong here lately which is totally uncharacteristic prior many months. Um, but finally it got its act in gear and that was, you know, basically uh, June, early July. And it has been up something like well, uh, nine out of 11 days, something like that, um, which is kind of amazing, but it's overbought substantially. And we're right at the top of the resistance area, the um, red zone. So it has reasons to turn around and start to dip back down again. Well, what about the Qs? They already started with an overbought condition in a resistance area a week ago. And boom, one big down day it never recovered from completely. It did come down, close the gap a few days ago, Monday. And that was expected. But... We're not bouncing very well, and closing below Monday's low is probably going to start it to break down a little bit more. And we might get down to this 359 area, 360 a little bit lower. Um, that would not surprise me, but I'm still intermediate to long term bullish. Short term, looking for a correction, and that's the stock market and indexes for you. Interest rate futures, bonds are up a little on the day. Yesterday's low was smack dab at a very well, shallow uh, support area, but it stopped the dip so far. And I reiterate the 88-day cycle low has is, is been phenomenal. The last 86 or so, seven 88 periods, 88 trading days. So if this cycle works like it has in the past, there's a lot of upside potential uh, with the potential of a major long-term bullish breakout on top of that. And that would be closing above 134, which I do expect. And I think it's going to easily be before the end of the year. Next is the spider real quick. And as you expect, uh, the mini, sorry, it's about the same in a resistance area, double topping out overbought conditions. We'll see if it can hold 
at the lows on Monday, Friday, and Thursday of last week. Next, bonds we talked about, 10-year notes are next. The same cycle exists, and it's an 88-day from low to low, unbelievably accurate cycle for the last six to seven repetitions. Um, and it seems to be working perfectly. Again, I talked to you about this days before it happened. So far, so good. We need to make a new high and then get up into that resistance area, blue, and then finally get over 118, and that will be a major long-term breakout. And you could call it a triple bottom, of course, at this particular point. Not finished yet, though. Next, crude. Stronger than I expected, getting toward that resistance area, but now it might be running out of gas. We are overbought for the third day today, inside doji type of trading range. Um, let's see what happens in the next day or two. I think it's running out of gas and going to start trending lower again, and the major trend is down. Next. Same kind of comment goes for heating oil. Uh, got uh, stronger than I expected. Didn't stop at the resistance areas that I thought it was going to stop at. And now we're overbought. That's about the best I can say. And we could have a um, bearish engulfing at any time, a official sell signal. And we've had some whoppers on uh, heating oil. A couple at the top right there, one at almost at the exact high. That is the high. That is the highest high. And a major sell signal back in here as well. Didn't go down too much, but it was down for a few days even though the signal was huge. And a few bad ones in the offing. There's a green, okay, next. Um, natural gas, a bear trend. I think it's going to break down again and start to make new lows. I'm just kind of waiting for a little bit of a breakout. Next, gold and silver had a bearish engulfing sell signal last Wednesday, a week ago. Thursday? Thursday, a week ago, and so far, so good. Now, this rally today is about as much as I can stand if you're in a long-term short position. What about silver? So I'm bearish. I'm looking for lower lows. Same thing for silver. The rally is about as much as I can put up with, so to speak, and I'm expecting it to turn down right away and start to make new lows for the last couple of weeks and challenge the lows of the last couple of months. Next, platinum. Same kind of comments, no reversal here, just simply overbought conditions and touching a previous bull trend line from underneath, which is a resistance, a bullish resistance line. It stands upwards, but it, you're trading under the line. So it's like the top of an upward slanting channel. Next, uh, high grade copper, waiting for a breakout, a little pennant forming here maybe. Hitting resistance, having a lot of trouble where you would expect it to have trouble. Let's see it start to break down next. Soybeans. Overbought sideways for a couple of days. This looks like it's going to come back to some major support, which would be 1280 and a little bit above. And probably turn around and go back up again. Long-term bullish here. I don't see any major top. I thought I saw one coming, but it didn't work out. And... Can't help it. Go with the flow. Trend is your friend. You can never make the market do what you want it to do. You always have to move with it, and that's enough of that. Soybean oil. Overbought. Probably starting to turn down. Got a few various support levels on the way down, but the big trend is sideways to somewhat lower. Next, meal, soybean meal. Hit resistance frequently in the last ooh, couple, three weeks. Has had trouble like uh, today at that blue blue horizontal line. Um, I think it's going to start turning down. Let's see it break below last week's lows, and then I'll be a bit more convinced that it'll challenge the lows made in the last couple of months. Looking for a break. Corn, same comments. He had an old bear trend line that got broken once, but looks like it's repairing itself, so to speak. And it stopped this rally. And um, we'll see how far down it can go. I'm expecting a challenge of the lows a little below 486 easily. Next, long-term trend is down on wheat, say the least. Um, we got up to some resistance plus a little bit more. And it looks like we're turning down here as well. Next, 
the cell signal we, that we got in cattle uh, last week, it worked perfectly. This is the first day of uh, bounce. It went down three days in a row after um, a great signal, and I'm expecting to see lower levels, period. All right, live hogs. Waiting for a breakout sideways trading range. I think it's going to head south. Next. I don't know what to say about OJ, except it's just screamingly bullish. Overbought now at a 92 and a half RSI. Uh, come on. This thing is going to turn down fast and furious very, very soon. Uh, but it looks kind of like a blow off top here. And that implies it can go do strange things in a very short period of time. <clears throat> and that would typically be the upside, like gapping up or going limit up or whatever. Um, wheat did that at the beginning of the war. Next, cocoa. Overbought, probably going to turn back down, but you got to be bullish. Next, cotton. Getting up toward that resistance area now and overbought. Fully expecting it to stop a little under 90 and maybe in the ball, ballpark prices at that right now. Next, sugar. Uh, overbought is turning it down. <clears throat> Minor downside correction so far. I'm um, looking for a test of 22 and probably into the high teens. Next, coffee. A couple of buy signals didn't work out exactly as I hoped. Uh, we do get these signals sometimes in topping and bottoming formations that aren't necessarily the highest high or lowest low. Uh, this case, uh, no comment. I do think it's going to rally a little bit more. It had been oversold. It did have two buy signals, and we are seeing a little bit of a breakout and some follow through here. So a little bit more of a rally, probably up to about 175 next. And we're back to the E-mini. You guys have a great day. See you tomorrow.